Welcome to the Spring 2015 Department Advising Session. In the fall, uh, we had uh, over 500 undergraduate students and 35 master students. That's important for you to know because it gives, should give you confidence that the department is doing well, that there are many students that are looking uh, to participate in uh, in the department. Uh, the employment continues to be strong so uh, don't have any fear of uh, uh, undue um, competition. Uh, the department does a, a fine job preparing you for industry and uh, as a result of that uh, we find ourselves with uh, many of our students uh, having uh, multiple job offers. Uh, I'm Dr. Everett. I'm the Undergraduate Program Director. Um, I get involved in your advising when uh, there are specific uh, questions or if there's something that seems to be in a gray zone. Uh, it's my job to make a, a, uh, a decision about uh, your case. Uh, you're welcome to come in and talk to me anytime. I enjoy talking to students. Uh, but. Uh, if what you need to do is simply get uh, paperwork filled out and, and the like, then uh, it's best, quickest, if you would go to a level one advisor that are listed here. You can find them in the uh, main office and uh, they, you can, they can usually handle your problems uh, very quickly. Group advising is done because with so many students in the uh, program, we're trying to uh, be uh, uh, responsive for your time and not waste uh, your time. So uh, what this will do is give you the ability to get your advising hold uh, lifted. There are other holds that may prevent you from registering. For example, if you have a, an outstanding fee or uh, if you're on probation or something of that nature, uh, this advising session does not lift those holds. Uh, you'll have to uh, come into the office uh, and uh, have them uh, help you uh, with whatever other holds that you have. You're not required to see a faculty advisor uh, each semester, but uh, you're certainly welcome to come by and, and talk to a faculty member anytime. You can also schedule a personal meeting with me or with any other faculty member uh, we enjoy talking to you, be happy to do that, but we will not force you to do it. Uh, if you're going to deviate from the degree plan, don't. Uh, the degree plan is what we use to try to figure out when to schedule uh, uh, classes. Um, oftentimes we have difficulty finding classrooms that are large enough, and uh, so oftentimes classes will have to be scheduled at the same time. We look at the uh, degree plan and uh, expect that if two courses are listed in different semesters on the degree plan, it should be okay to list it at the same time because if you're following the degree plan, you will not uh, be taking those two courses simultaneously. So uh, there's other reasons, but uh, the main thing is don't deviate from the degree plan. Undergraduate students uh, in 12 credits are considered to be full-time. We encourage you to take uh, 30 uh, hours each academic year, so that would be 15 in the fall, 15 in the spring. But uh, that's you know the, there's a, a push from the state to try to get people through uh, the university education quickly. Uh, we're in favor of that, uh, but what we're concerned about is don't take so many that you end up in trouble. Course waivers. There's a number of things that might cause you to need a. Uh, an over, a course override uh, for a course. Uh, for example, the common ones are a waiver for class prerequisite. Uh, we, the departmental policy is to not waive prerequisites. About the only time that you could get a waiver for a prerequisite is if you have a substantially completed, uh, if you've completed a substantially similar course in some other university. Uh, it, it, as an example, you can bring it in if we evaluate that course and determine that it is in fact the same as the prerequisite or close enough to the prerequisite, then we will waive the prerequisite. Otherwise, uh, we don't do that, so don't even bother to ask. 
Uh, other overrides are for class, major, and level. So, um, for example, oftentimes you might have a, uh, a course that requires a classification. Maybe you're supposed to be senior. You're not quite senior because maybe you haven't transferred your courses yet or something. And so we can give you, uh, on a one-by-one -one basis, uh, we can take a look at it and, and uh, provide those. Repeat limits. Uh, you can enroll for a course three times. Uh, this includes W's and, and uh, uh, withdraw withdrawals, uh, failures, or whatever. So if you need a course, for example, if you need a C or better in a course, uh, you sign up for it, drop it, sign up for it, drop it, sign up for it, get a D. That's it. Uh, you can't take it the fourth time. Uh, the department is uh, uh, very uh, firm on this uh, rule, and uh, so be careful. Uh, we take it very seriously. Uh, if you have, a, if there's a course that's uh, closed, uh, we can sometimes give you a waiver for that. Uh, we typically, our philosophy is to uh, allow as many students as possible into the class, but we get um, a limit set by um, fire codes and, and things that are not within our control, and um, we have a hard limit on the number of students that can be put into a classroom. And that we can't uh, uh, exceed. Uh, the front office does keep um, waiting lists. So if you want to try to get on a waiting list for a course, uh, go into the, the main office. So far, we've had pretty good luck getting the registrar to juggle course uh, rooms to allow other people in. So definitely get on the waiting list if you have a problem with, uh, with a course that's closed. Uh, the state of Texas uh, is allowing... Uh, new students, uh, people that have enrolled after 2007, um, to only drop six courses throughout their uh, undergraduate career. The only exceptions uh, to this rule would be if you, let's say, get in a, uh, heaven forbid, a, a major automobile accident and you have to withdraw from the university completely. Uh, those, uh, uh, that type of withdrawal um, can be granted an, except, uh, an exemption. But uh, most of the time, you know, if you, for example, a very common uh, uh, excuse is that, uh, well, you know, I didn't realize how much uh, work the courses would be and I have to drop them or else I'll fail. Uh, unfortunately, that's not a valid uh, excuse. Uh, this does not apply to courses that are dropped before census day because that's when the state of Texas determines when you are officially enrolled in a class. The census day, I believe, is on the 12th class day, so it comes very early in the semester. Uh, so if you're going to uh, realize that you can't take a course, make sure you get out before census day. Transfer credit. You can transfer up to 66 lower division credits, provided they are evaluated to be equivalent, roughly equivalent or substantially equivalent to the courses that you're substituting them for. Upper division transfers are much more rare and you have to have a compelling reason to be transferring upper division upper divisions junior senior uh, courses oftentimes we are asked to waive requirements on sociology philosophy computers you know uh, um, um, political science english whatever we are not allowed to do that we can handle a substitute mechanical engineering courses and that's it. Uh, if you want to try to get a substitution or a transfer uh, from uh, for an English course, you have to see the English department for that. If you are transferring from another institution and you want us to confirm that the course you took is substantially equivalent to the course that we offer, you need to bring in a tra transcript and uh, a course syllabus, a, a detailed course syllabus, so that we can see what it was that was in that class so that we can make an evaluation. Typically, uh, you would um, go to the level one advisors, they would get you the paperwork that you need and then I would evaluate it and, uh, and make a, a decision. Academic standing, uh, we have academic probation, uh, which uh, will, you know, you will go on to academic probation when your overall GPA uh, falls below the minimum of 2.0. Um, 
once you are on probation, you will be uh, suspended and you will have to uh, apply for reinstatement. Uh, do this as soon as you can because it does take, we respond to it very quickly, but it does take several layers of administrative approval and those layers uh, oftentimes take um, more time to, to get through the process, especially at the beginning of the terms. So start it out early. If uh, you have been, um, if you get on academic probation and if you are reinstated, um, you don't have to get your GPA up over 2.0 in one semester. Uh, but what you do have to do is whatever you take in the uh, that semester, you have to make more than a 2.0. The, uh, the way that you reestablish uh, uh, satisfactory academic standing is uh, you uh, petition uh, for a reinstatement. You go to the level one advisors. They will help you with the paperwork. They bring it to me and then... Um, uh, oftentimes I will talk to you in person. There's a, a something called an option two which is uh, intended for students that are uh, essentially um, deep in a academic mess and they basically need a fresh start on, on their uh, academic perform or their academic career. It's very rare uh, but it does exist. Optional programs, there are minors in engineering, mathematics, physics, business, and computer science uh, that you are uh, able to take. We encourage you to focus on one degree uh, and, uh, and would discourage you if, unless your GPA is, is high. Um, we also have an accelerated bachelor master uh, program for mechanical engineering students where you can get uh, a, uh, a quicker, um, uh, you can get your master's degree in, in a shorter period of time if you have interest in, in that type of thing. Internships can count as technical electives. I caution you, however, that uh, we're serious about the, tech, uh, the uh, internship has to be teaching you something about engineering. Uh, typically, uh, a sales job, um, r repairing uh, vehicles, things of that sort we do not consider to be university uh, level uh, education and we would deny that. You have to apply for the internship before you take the internship so that we can be prepared to check up on you as you do your internship if necessary. Uh, for the seniors, um, you have to do a pre-degree evaluation two semesters prior to graduation so that you have, if there's anything lacking in your degree plan, you have time to make it up. Uh, see the uh, level one advisors uh, for more information about that. It's your responsibility as the student to request this. Uh, we try to catch you uh, and ask you to do it, but uh, if, if you fall through the cracks somehow, uh, it's your responsibility to know to to request that. Uh, one of the things that you have to be careful of is that uh, there are two courses that are, um, have to be taken um, one before the other. One is engineering design. has to be completed before taking senior design. Senior design must be in the final semester of your program. And you also have to have a minimum GPA of 2.0 in the major. Priority registration dates, uh, watch out for those. Uh, these dates will probably change each semester, uh, but be careful that you uh, jump on those when, you, when it comes to your time. And that's it. If you now pass the uh, quiz that's up on Blackboard, uh, we will then uh, lift your advising hold.